Where are you putting your investment dollars? Where do you see the best bang for the renewable buck? So I think I think we're seeing a perfect storm. First of all, Brian, great to see you. It looks like you get all the, the fun jobs there in the, in the field in, in the Netherlands. Um, I think we are in a perfect storm, if you will, in, in Europe. We obviously have a, a, a very, very positive policy backdrop, both on the EU level and on the national government level. But, you know, we are we have an energy security uh, issue in, in Europe. And really, the only way to solve that energy security issue is through renewables. They're the cheapest, the cleanest, the only really homegrown form of energy available on the continent. So, if, of course, as an investment manager focused on in the energy transition, we're heavily investing. We're investing half a billion euros. Uh, it's about 1.5 gigawatts of projects across wind, solar, um, battery energy storage. We're obviously looking at green hydrogen as well. Uh, we really think that's going to be the medium to to long term solution in Europe and a huge uh, investment opportunity, probably the investment opportunity of a lifetime. Well, we OK, that's a big statement. I'll get into that. We hear this. They're cheaper, you know, per megawatt hour. Is that true without subsidies, though, Baldwin? I mean, because people jump in and say, no, 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 no. You, they're cheaper if you count, you know, no subsidies. And then if you don't count the fact you got to bury the wind turbines in the ground for the rest of humanity, how are they less expensive? Well, you can look at it a num number of different ways. We can, first of all, uh, zero marginal cost. That's tough to compete with. Um, number two, even if you compare sort of an apples to apples levelized cost of energy calculation, I'm looking at charts where uh, large scale PV onshore wind are at or below any other form of, uh, of energy resource. Um, and even if you layer in uh, long duration batteries, which is now the trend, you're extremely competitive. So, you know, we spoke 10 years ago about subsidies. Uh, they still exist in some markets in, in Spain, for instance, cause where I'm based. We're looking at a lot of merchant uh, plants at the moment. That's, that's basically the norm, PPAs, uh, very little to no subsidies behind them. So, yeah, we're, we're bullish. They're cost effective. They're green. And they're going to solve this problem. And isn't, though, the knock, you talked about battery storage, obviously maybe multi-tens of billion dollar opportunity there, a bunch of companies in the United States getting into that long duration storage. But long duration is sort of in the eye of the beholder right now, isn't it, Baldwin? I mean, where are we? You make wind power, you kind of got to use it right away. Where do you see the battery opportunity going and how long duration can long duration actually be? So I, I think um, that's been the big knock on renewables. It's intermittent. It's crazy. Um, but we've moved a lot, a lot of um, weight since the 10 years ago when, when batteries started showing up. Uh, costs have come down. I think they're about 100 bucks per kilowatt hour now. Uh, we're looking at, you know, in the U.S., um, four-hour duration batteries. That's become best practice. It's also uh, now showing up in, in some plants in, in Europe. Um, so we're moving towards renewable energy that's dispatchable or semi-firm instead of completely intermittent. Obviously, we want to get to fully firm, fully dispatchable. Um, and that's a question of ramping up battery production, uh, implementing longer duration batteries in projects. Um, but we're starting to be able to, to firm and shape um, the energy. Um, and so I see hybridization of plants. I also see standalone storage. Um, if you ask me about my view of the European market, um, you know, it's a combination of wind, solar and battery energy storage. Yeah, and those governments are pushing it here in the Netherlands, there in Spain. And you called it Baldwin the opportunity of a lifetime.